Hey, Leslie. What? I'm a dinosaur. Oh, my God. Just kidding. April Fool's Day. Oh, darn it. You got me again this year, Sam. I know. I'm really getting to the spirit. And actually, the Deadlights is getting into the spirit of April Fool's Day. Why is that? Well, we're doing a live event at the Logan Theater on April 1st. Wow. I know. We're going to have a little pre-screening event followed by a screening of April Fool's Day from 1986. We'll have activities and a mini sode a live mini sode in which... If you come on by, we'll ask you some questions and you'll be featured. If you want to be on the show or you just want to hang out with us and get some April Fool's Day themed drinks, come on by on April 1st. Logan Square Theater. Absolutely. Please come on by, support a local theater and us. It'll be fun. See you there. Bye. Don't you want Don't you want Don't you want Don't you want it? 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 You lose your living mind. My dead mind. Welcome to the Deadlights Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Johnston. And I am Leslie, bringing you your weekly dose of horror. Everybody. Welcome. Yeah, and that up. was a very abrupt and shocking beginning to <laughs> the start of this episode. Yes. More than what I was expecting. Ooh, but hey, my we're bad. here. <laughs> Welcome back. That's me right there. <laughs> you I'm in a, a nutshell. espresso shot. Expre- you are an ex- espresso shot. Espresso shot. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm um, an espresso shot with a side of Malort. Ooh. 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 Nice. Ooh. <laughs> That's it. Uh, um, well, you just got us today. Yes. Um, just the two of us, Leslie and Sam show. Uh, welcome. And today we got a little treat with something that I wasn't expecting, really. Absolutely. Didn't know what to expect. No. From Kill Baby Kill mm-hmm. from 1966, written and directed by Mario Bava. A Carpathian village is haunted by the ghost of a murderous little girl prompting a coroner and a medical student to uncover her secrets while a witch attempts to protect the villagers. Well, let's get into it, huh? Okay, let's, let's do start it. Let's start off with the can. The can. The can. How oh. it was actually made. Um, first of all, definitely want to compliment the production design. Mm-hmm. The sets were incredible. So good. Of the, In this movie. I mean, they were, first of all, they were big. Mm-hmm. Second of all, there were a lot of them because yeah. we had like um, not only like the interior sets with like the autopsy room and the castle and the inn with like mm-hmm. the bar. And we also got exterior sets with the cemetery and these uh, streets that they're walking down the yeah. whole movie too. Are, are, okay, none of that was actually filmed in location. Because I don't think they would do the, that back in the day, the right? The exteriors, I believe, when they were walking in the village, I uh-huh. pretty sure that was in a old Actual. village, mm-hmm. I think. But pretty much everything else, I'm inside. I'm pretty sure everything was a set. Incredible. I think there might have been only a few because just the the sky looked actually real. It looked mm-hmm. like. It there was, was some on location dawn. stuff for sure. Yeah, yeah you're right. The, some there were some exteriors of them going <clears throat> in and out of castles for sure, where and walking through the streets that were, yeah, definitely on location mm-hmm. somewhere. But these sets were so detailed and felt like we were watching a theater production in the best way. Like they got the best production designers to fill these spaces with yeah. things that made it felt super lived in. And then on top of the cool sets, it was how they were shooting them and lighting them that like added to the life of them as well with a lot of uh, colors, a lot of blues for like the shadows yeah. and stuff. And then they were filling in the highlights with reds and greens and oranges. Yeah, that orange, that soft orange was just so beautiful and everybody. Um, and because of that, because I think the lighting was so um concentrated they had to do those tighter kind of um shots which i just absolutely loved because of the heightened acting and those close shots 
just makes it just so much more I don't know it just like didn't seem cheesy it seemed intentional and I think the editing also added to it not being too overloaded with information but we're just getting just the right amount of information that it isn't too in the 60s and 70s it, it's always just spoonfuls of information um and it just was the right amount and i really liked that yeah and there were some some shots that i really liked and just i, I don't know made the film mm -hmm. and i gotta yeah going along with the editing it was how the camera was moving too yeah they had those yeah very swooping in shots and um awesome silhouette shots like amazing negative space that they were using yeah. the whole time like in almost every scene we were getting either people walking through tunnels where we were seeing a lot of silhouettes people talking to each other just in shadows and then within scenes where the camera was positioned was kind of being obscured by things the one that stuck out in my mind was when the witch was talking to her lover, Carl, mm -hmm. and they were looking over the body and they were shooting it behind, I think it was like netting. So the the lines were just going over their faces and over their eyes and it was just obscuring things. Um, and they were doing that in almost every scene and it just made things more interesting to look yeah. at. Yeah, um, They were giving us so many interesting things to look at within a scene they were playing yeah they were playing with the angles they were playing with perspective adding those um mirror shots as well of mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. uh, who can we trust who are the good guys who are the bad guys again going back to the lighting and a lot of the scenes when either the doctor was sneaking around or people were sneaking around in the village there was a lighting that was coming from underneath so it was hitting people and making people look like super maniacal and super schemy. Mm -hmm. And they were even shooting the doctor like that, who's supposed to be our hero. And so that's when I had that question of like, wait a second, who can we trust? Is he the bad guy? Are the villagers the bad guy? Mm -hmm. Is this actual superstition mm -hmm. um, or just a bunch of psychos? Yeah. Just a tall tale. Other. Yeah. And just an actual, it's an actual murder. And I didn't know whether to actually believe the sorceress and the lover, Carl. Um, didn't know. I don't know. I was like, is science or nature or. Yeah. It was cool how they really dropped us in and just started throwing information at us without it being too much, but enough for us to question both sides because we didn't know anyone mm -hmm. even the doctor character no. we didn't there we came into the story when he came to the village so he was a stranger to us just like he was a stranger to all these villagers yeah but then all these villagers were we were still like we are in a strange world yeah they were understand. so sus they yeah. were just like running away and nobody wanted to say anything shutting and, their doors yeah shutting <laughs> shutting everything yeah and um, like there was those shots too of the villagers in windows, you know, mm -hmm. just looking at him and it may, it was very scary. And also when he walks into the inn for the first time, there's just like a panning shot of all the eyes on, on him. him. And it again made me think, well, fuck, like they want to kill him or they uh, mistrust him. And why do they mistrust him? And so they were doing a great job of throwing our suspicion onto everybody. Mm hmm just through how they were shooting it. And I thought, because, again, this tends to be heightened drama that's a little bit hard to for the scripts to be as realistic as we, you know, are used to, I guess, because, like, nowadays we shoot more realism mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know, the, the, the scripts in the 60s are just so... Ah melodramatic um but i thought it was well written still um it had this like poetry to it i wrote down a couple of like you know remorseless ghost mm -hmm. you know and this isn't sorcery this is torture mm -hmm. i i really like the script too so um 
Yeah, and <laughs> it it went back to I think yes, some things when you like kind of pick them apart could seem over dramatic in themselves, but it all is kind oh. of servicing each mm -hmm. other and all going back to how it's made too, which is a little over dramatic. So it kind of just all works together. It does. Um, and I think we should get to the meat of the it meat? because meat. the story actually does have a lot kind of yeah. going on underneath. You know, we had this theme of science versus nature mm -hmm. and you know, the villagers are, are, the superstitious and the dumb ones, they're peasants, you know, of course they're going to believe all these tall tales. And then here comes this handsome fucking man who loves science. He's a doctor. Um, and the villagers don't like him because of that, mm -hmm. because they understand that he will not get what's going on, which is they're being terrorized by a little child. On the basis, this is a story about, science versus religion slash belief nature and how we deal with death in both those ways you know we have um the villagers who are kind of this quote-unquote religious side who want to deal with will with it with sorcery and with their traditions burying the body in a specific way putting the um, coins in the heart so they make sure that these people don't come back um, it's all very steeped in traditions that they've already had. I would say more superstition as opposed to religion. I mean, mm -hmm. I know we mm -hmm. see a lot of crosses, mm -hmm. um, but it, it was a lot of like garlics and a lot of mm -hmm. like uh, flowers and leaves and crystals and smoke mm -hmm. that um, they use in order to uh, drive the bad spirits, the little girl away. Mm hmm. And it all seems passed down mm -hmm. from because it's a very old village. It seems like they've been doing this, at least with this little spirit, for 20 years. For 20. But these are things that they've had within their culture probably forever. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's these old wives' tales, quote unquote, that they've been pa passed down through the generations to help them deal with this supernatural spirit. Mm -hmm. And then we have the. Corner coming the corner. in, the doctor, the man of science coming in, and he wants to examine the body, and he wants to go to the places and investigate and get the clues, and he's trying to scientifically figure out what's going on here, and the clash of these two things coming together, and he doesn't like how they're dealing with things, and they don't like how he's dealing with things. Well, no, because the villagers, they're so superstitious that they... Wrap the young girl mm -hmm. in bob wire mm -hmm. to lure off, or actually to protect, protect her. her. Yeah, lure off the the bad spirit, but most importantly, keep her bedridden. Mm -hmm. So then she doesn't go off in that you know um, trance, yeah, yeah, hypnotic thing that the little girl does. Yeah, um, which that I I actually love that scene. Because we have that, this intersection of the science and superstition where the doctor's like, "What are you serious? You just wrapped this little girl in barbed wire. She's burning up. She's on the brink of death, he thinks. But they're doing it because they have the superstition and they're actually trying to protect her from this evil spirit mm -hmm. that does ultimately kill her. So I thought that was just a... Uh, that was just like a perfect imagery of what this movie is trying to talk about in that scene. Mm -hmm. um, because in the end, she does get taken by the spirit when he takes the barbed wire off of her. Yeah. So that same did he help night. her? Nope. Nope. No, the sorceress tried to. She came in and did a seance and whipped her with some episode there or something i don't know just like ktush. um but yeah she uh, i don't know did what were her efforts ever going to be successful you know mm -hmm. cuz mm -hmm. you're dealing with the supernatural and in this case it's much more powerful than science and just pure religious stuff mm -hmm. 
So, I don't know. Yeah, it, it seemed like for some reason they were able to keep this thing kind of at bay for the most part mm -hmm. for over these last 20 years. <laughs> they would lock up their doors as if the child... Lock the doors. Lock the doors, but don't ever put any curtains no. on because that's what the little girl does. She want, she has to make eye contact with you in order yeah. for you to... I was like, this this town could use some curtains for sure. Yeah. That's the cure, maybe. <laughs> that might be the cure. Um, But, uh, yeah. And then when we come into the story, when this guy shows up, it kind of seems like things have been ramping up recently. Mm -hmm. You know, so this witch of the town who's been able to maybe keep things at bay with her rituals or whatever, her seances, maybe she's like starting to lose the the spirit is becoming more powerful. So she can't even stop it at this it's point. It's becoming more powerful because here comes a stranger. You know, it's always a stranger that comes into a village and fucking wipes away the whole village mm -hmm. because he has a whole different perspective in which he is trying to fucking embed and um, it's causing more harm mm -hmm. essentially and it does because like two other people get killed mm -hmm. um, and we then discover that our our main girl the student, the student. who's helping the doctor um, is actually <laughs> the sister of Melissa. Of the ghost girl. Of the ghost girl. Yeah. Um, she thought her parents were someone else, and it actually is uh, the medium, which is the mom of Melissa, the dead the girl, girl. The ghost girl. And Monica, who is the medical student. That, that realization, that like character development, um, that I don't, I'm not a big fan of. Me either. I didn't, I didn't find any. Yeah, because that to me, was something that they threw in. It, it felt like it came too late in the story and wasn't a significant enough realization that, like, added to it. Mm -hmm. I thought it would have been still... It still... The story would have been as strong if they would have just kept that out of there and just still had the story of going to defeat the mother, but yeah. you just don't make the medical student any part of, I think they were trying to tie that character to make yeah. it more kind of do important. a twist a -roo, kind yeah. of like um but it was unnecessary I agree I think was. it was unnecessary I wonder how successful it was back when it in 66 I don't yeah. know I don't know I mean I think the movie besides that point is successful mm -hmm. that is the only thing really in my mind that I would be like eh, we don't we don't need that um, it just seemed like something they were trying to throw in there to have this extra angle exactly. slash twist yeah. or whatever. Um, but I do, I think the movie is successful. And so in the end, it what this doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because this movie is kind of about how we deal with grief mm -hmm. because the, the big thing that we reveal, reveal in the end is that the mother of the ghost who's also the mother of the medical student mm -hmm. is essentially keeping this little ghost girl alive with her grief and controlling her to kill people because she wants, she can't let go. No. And also we then realize in the same breath of us realizing that our main girl is the sister of the dead girl. Um, she reveals that Melissa, I guess like, she got trampled by some drunk mm -hmm. drivers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the horses were drunk or the people were drunk. Maybe both. <laughs> um, and they weren't paying attention because there was a festival going on. And uh, she's blaming the village because mm -hmm. they should have known better. There were people around. No one protected her. And it seemed like they were the wealthy people in, in the village. Um so she's paying, like, she is making Melissa through her own rituals, because mm -hmm. she's a medium, to attack the village um, whenever she is in grief, yes. which is, she seems very, uh, woo, out of it. Yep. She's, she's, she's a wacko. She's pretty grief stricken lately, I guess, because yeah. she's going hard and killing some people. Mm -hmm. and, um, 
And yeah, and it goes back to this place of how we deal with death. You know, we have, I think that's what works about this movie so well is we've seen so many different perspectives of it. We have Mm -hmm. the villagers who are the supernatural. We have uh, the coroner who is the man of science. And then we have this mother who's been dealing with death in a malicious and bloodlusty way. So we have like all the different extremes of how we grieve. Um, And I think I I was like, damn, this movie really is delivering on what it's trying to say. Yeah. Of its topics. Yeah. I, I, I I thought it presented a very nice piece of meat. I, I think so too. Yeah. Just the, the little, the little extra kind of fattiness uh, of the meat Mm -hmm. of, Revealing that the, the, you know, girl was actually the sister. Well, and I think that that we can kind of now go into the cook. Yeah. That kind of goes into that. You know, mm-hmm. I, I agree. I think that that throw in, which was 75 percent into the movie, was we realize the importance of uh, Monica, the medical student, mm-hmm. more than we even thought. Um, that happens like way at the end and then nothing really pays off from that. Mm-hmm. So it does feel superfluous and unnecessary. I mean, I wrote down, it, it seems unnecessary. It truly was. Um, and then because like there was no emotional connection that happened after that. Right. Um, there was no kind of like, there was no time for Monica to ever sit with that information. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Because we we knew that the movie was going to end yeah. soon. And we were just like, whoa, we just got this reveal. And we're just going to keep escalating after that. Like, yeah. Uh, like, we, it was just such a throwaway thing. Um, that I just really wish they just didn't add. Yeah. It, it, eh. mm-hmm. You know? It was like trying to be a little too clever. Yeah. Almost. And um, and there was um, a concept in which they also threw in uh, while um, the doctor was trying to catch Melissa in the, the home. And there's that infinite loop that happens mm. in the mom's bedroom. Or a bedroom mm-hmm. um, where he just keeps going through the, you know, through the room. He keeps from one, you know, door to the next door. Um, and then he ends up seeing himself and then he catches, uh, he catches up to himself and he, he smiles. And um, he then like backs up against the painting of oh yes the mansion the mansion with and, the spider webs in the yep. back and then the it like fades and adds into him actually being outside of the mansion wrapped in spider webs yeah that it was, was a really cool dreamy crazy moment i really wish we could have i mean we got that once more with the girl going down the staircase mm-hmm. um into the um tombs yeah. um and she goes through uh, that same kind of infinite loop and just keeps going down and down and down so we get this image of actually just a spiral keeps going around and around oh god it was dizzy yeah it was wild and there was a couple moments those were two of them and then there was this other dream sequence that went on that i believe it was monica that had the dream oh yeah where there was just like you know the dolls were all over it and then um yeah we saw the Mm -hmm. the tomb and it was just a a moment of really wild editing that was this dream sequence and it was really cool. It was it was really working. It was really effective. Yeah. And I think that with th- that working with kind of the theatricalness of the performances and of the sets just makes it feel so much cooler, honestly. It just like, because you have so much to work with 
to make these crazy cool dream sequences um and it just all feels like it's all servicing each other yeah um yeah i, I thought the cook aside from that little fattiness that we didn't get the cook of it all really works together oh yeah i i think so too yeah it was it was well told and i was surprised i was truly surprised there was a also that really cool one shot it was i think the first time that we get little creepy melissa coming towards a house where the camera was outside oh yeah and it was like doing this like swinging Swing. motion mm -hmm. back and forth for a little bit and then it stopped doing it and we kind of like came down to the ground but then little melissa's feet came mm -hmm. into the shot with an actual swing mm -hmm. and the whole time you know if she's off ca camera and if if it's pov uh we just get her little laughter <laughs> We're supposed to understand that she plays with the dead bodies. Yeah. It's like her dolls. Yeah. Essentially, because we keep getting <gasps> shots of dolls mixed with. Ah, that's so good. Yeah. With dolls. And there's also this concern that the villagers have of making sure that they're dead. That's why they're putting coins in their hearts, making sure that these seemingly dead bodies mm -hmm. don't get up again because the little girl's playing with them. With them. Like mm -hmm. their dolls or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I love it's that. A very subtle tie. But yeah. I think that that's what they were going for. I like that. Yeah, because then we get two villagers trying to um, bury her, essentially. Um, and I thought at first I was just like, oh, they want to bury her because um, the they feel bad that this person was killed by this little girl. And now there's these scientists that are continuing playing with them, mm -hmm. you know, um, and they're not going to find anything. They're not going to be able to like bring them back. So like, yeah. what's the point? So just leave the dead dead. Mm -hmm. Like, let us do what we do. Mm -hmm. I think that was, that was part of an interaction too. It was like, they were supposed to, at the beginning of the film, do an autopsy on the first woman that we see. But the villagers actually take the body before the, the coroner autopsy. even gets there. Mm -hmm. So because they're like, let us do what we do. This is our this is our thing. Don't come in here and mm -hmm. try to upset what we've got going. Yeah. Um, let us have this little piece of mm -hmm. uh, burying the body. Yeah. And I find it interesting that in the end, what really defeats it is this stranger coming into town. It kind of it, it very much functions like a Western almost where yeah. you have a village that's in trouble. And in a Western, <laughs> it's usually like a, you know, a, a outlaw that's taken over the town yep. and taking everyone's money, extorting people, <laughs> killing people. And like then in this. Pistols. Yeah. And this it's a ghost girl. Um, but then you have this stranger, this outsider coming into the town essentially to save these people and at first he tries it his way doesn't work that way eventually what does work is this stranger coming in and working with the locals that are already there mm -hmm. and in this case it was the witch and the witch is actually the one ultimately that kills the old woman in the end and ends this cycle she yeah, kills the old woman <clears throat> and then she she died in the most fabulous dramatic way possible if I was an actress, I mean, what the fuck? I am an actress. As an actress, I would love to have her role. Fuck yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's get to the thrill. <laughs> what actually makes this thing scurry? Nothing. Nothing scary. <laughs> Nothing scary. I mean, definitely what they were trying to make scary mm -hmm. uh, was Melissa, the little ghost girl. And I thought those scenes that we have of the ghost girl either approaching or watching someone were pretty creepy. I mean, we got shots of the little hand on the window. On the window. And then the ghost girl in the window as well. And then, I mean, the standout scene, I think, really is when Melissa is in the window looking at the girl that they were trying yeah. to protect. And then we, you can tell 
little little ghost girl's got the the hypnotist going. The girl gets up from bed and does a little like um enchanted kind of like walk. Yeah. Up to a, up to a spike and a very dangerous lamp or candle a holder on the wall. Yeah, I, that seemed like a hazard to begin with. Absolutely. But very convenient for this ghost girl to kill someone with. It was so out of the way. So out of the way. And she forces this girl to just face up and <clears throat> ooh to her to her heart or esophagus or yeah. Kill shot, no matter Kill what. Kill shot, yeah. Ow. I thought that was cool. I actually was not expecting the whole like hypnosis thing to happen. Because no. we saw in the beginning the girl jump onto the spikes by herself. And I was like, oh, she was just trying to avoid the ghost. But no, mm-hmm. I think little ghost girl made her Hypnotize. Yeah, because yeah, she was jump. just in the back. Um, Yeah, I was... Oh, it's gonna sound horrible. <laughs> Just blew into it. Oh. Um, no, I really thought that the girl was then going to at least ha like touch them in some way or push them or be the one driving the knife into their hearts. But no, it was all mind powers. Mm-hmm. I kinda like that. It made for more like creative kills. It wasn't just a little girl stabbing. Yeah. And um, it then also kind of made this question of was it the little girl, a supernatural force, or was it the mom, the mom, or was it someone else, or was it suicide, mm-hmm. an accident, whatever? It kind of then threw things up in the air a little more. But was it scary? But was it scary? No. Not real. I mean, I wasn't really I scared. I wasn't scared. I'm, maybe I'm just desensitized. Yeah, for sure. Is that how you pronounce that? Desensitized? Yeah. I mean, I, I feel <laughs> like I've seen enough creepy kids at this point where this one it was just a little dressed in white. I'm like, girl, get out of here. Get, get back in your coffin. You could barely come through that window. Yeah. And also, yeah, I just put up curtains. <laughs> <laughs> that would solve everything. And, I mean, it does. <laughs> the cold. The co- Everything. Yeah, this everything. village seemed cold, too. Yeah. Yeah. The Also, the mom needed to shut those windows. Shut those windows. You were just cold, girl. She was like, <laughs> like uh, girl. You know the windows are wide open. Mm-hmm. No. Well, she hears the people that she's killed. <laughs> The, I love it. The, I love it. Yeah. I love listening. I love listening to the dead. Creepy mom. Yeah. Creepy mom. Mm-mm. Mom. Mom. Um. All right, but how about how about the overall ride? No. The overall movie? ride. The overall ride. <laughs> um. What do we got for the overall ride? I mean, I would say, personally, I was entertained the entire time i was enchanted i was enchanted i was hypnotized (laughs) Uh um because they were moving the story along pretty well building Mm -hmm. this mystery of what's going on who to trust who not to trust and along the way giving us interesting things to look at the shots were really cool and the scenes were um shot dynamically Mm -hmm. even if they were dialogue scenes so they were always giving us something interesting to look at, which I do appreciate. I love, I, yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was in heavily fed the information. Um, the edits were fantastic, and the color, mm-hmm. the color, the coloration of this was so wonderful, mm-hmm. and the lighting, it just like everything about it was so pleasing. Yeah, and and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Absolutely, which is always fun. It's the, always cool. The to... only part that is kind of like bumpy is kind of that like derailing of yeah. the plot with the sister, but we pretty quickly get back on track yeah. and get to the end, which we just can kind of like forget about it. Yeah, it's yeah. fine. Ooh. That was your mom and sister. It's okay. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. We don't need to talk about that. Mm. But for the most part, I really was just, I was satisfied with the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same. Nice. So uh, how, 
Out of all this, out of all, out of all this, out of all this, smash pumpkin, smash pumpkin ratings. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Do you want uh, me to go first? Do you want? Yeah, to go first? you go first, Sam. All right. Um, it's gonna be rated pretty high because of all the things that we just talked about. Um, if you are just skipping to this part, go back and listen to all the reasons <laughs> why we like this movie. Um, I think I am. I gotta give this movie a four point seven. Nice. I gotta give this movie a four because I'm going through these criteria that we have, and I'm really liking how it delivers on every single one, except for the very obvious thing that we've talked about multiple times. Mm-hmm. And really, like, I expected myself to like how this movie was shot because, just in general, I understand like how giallo horror usually looks and i i personally like that aesthetic of things so i did get that and i was very satisfied with how it was shot but i was not expecting how much it was actually delivering on the con Uh, the content and like what they were trying to say and all the different things that they were able to put in there without it being too spoon fed so I yeah, I was just like, dang, okay, you gave me way more. Yeah, and I was it was layered perfectly. Mm-hmm. It wasn't too much of nature versus science. I mean, even though that was the like overall drive of the story, um, yeah, for all the things that I've said, I'm gonna give it a four. Four, uh, four, oh. solid four. I quite enjoyed myself. And I truly would recommend people um, this movie because I think, like we've mentioned before, um, I mean, I never heard of this movie, but we need to get all of these movies just, it's, you know, light of day. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's, it's important. To, it's important to mm-hmm. watch these movies because, I mean, you look at the title. I mean, we saw the title last week, yeah. and I mean, for me personally, I was like, I really have no idea what I'm in for. Mm-hmm. Um, Kill Baby Kill. It's it's a wild title, and I'm I'm not sure what the Italian title might was. I think it was probably something a little different. But yeah, I I think it's a movie that might be turn people yeah. might be turned off because of that, and because it's Italian, it's old... because it's from the '60s. But you're right these movies are important to watch because there's so much rich filmmaking that's going Mm -hmm. on and rich storytelling that's going on that people haven't seen yet. Exactly. And if you're not into horror all that much because of how violent it is, this has violence, but it is slow. Like it is not in your face, Mm -mm. you know, um, and it's very mild. Uh, So, If you just want to enjoy a new movie that you never would have thought of putting it on, this one's like pretty good Mm -hmm. in the in the sense of horror. Yeah. Yeah. And a good introduction, I think, to to older films. Yeah. You know, I think people can kind of get turned off with a black and white. All right. It's not black and white. You still got a color movie, but it kind of still does have those old horror. I saw a lot of, you know. Frankenstein and Dracula going yes. on in here uh-huh. um, with the shots and the costumes, but it still brought something fresh and something new. And it, it kind of elevated that a little yeah. bit more, you know, it, it, it changed it a little bit it's and still, it evolved it. Yeah. Yes. And it's still very theatrical. I want to say a lot of these movies in the sixties and seventies um, continue to shoot in a very theater like um, style that oh man it's just so pleasant to watch sometimes mm-hmm. you know to just go back and not have a movie that is shot in like new york and you can tell that it's fucking new york mm-hmm. um on site so it's pretty pretty cool yeah i like that it's great so check it out y'all please yeah. check it out kill baby kill kill baby kill all right well nice. what's gonna be on the docket for next week oh i God. wonder it's Ooh. my turn Woo. Yeah. all right Kill baby kill. Is it my turn? I I don't know. Go for it. I'm, I thought it. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was you. confident when I said it, and then now I'm like, ow. It's okay. No. Go for it. I picked 
Did you? I think I did. All right, I'm, I'm gonna you just go do for it. it. I'm going to the like middle-ish, the middle-ish side. The middle-ish. Middle-ish side. So everyone Stick knows. in the middle-ish with you. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm not going to look at the title. Okay. Friends on a camping trip discover that the town they're vacationing in is being plagued in an unusual fashion by parasitic aliens from outer space. The Mist. From 2003. 2003. Oh, 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 wait, no, Friends. Friends is the key word. Because I was going to say World of the World, War of the Worlds. Do we have that one on the bucket? I don't think so, actually. It is should it, be in there. Is it quite horrible? It, it is Dreamcatcher. Dreamcatcher? Directed by Lawrence Kasdan, written by Lawrence Kasdan and William Goldman. Yes, this is based off of a Stephen King book. Oh, nice. We got a little more Stephen King in the mix. Stephen King. Yes. All right, cool. Dreamcatcher. Nice. Dreamcatcher. See, see you next week for that one. Well, you can follow me on Instagram, color me Leslie. And me at beep beep Richie T and nice. us at the Deadlight The Spot. Lights. Also check out Playground Social, which is the Yo. studio that we're recording this from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But until next week, let's get, get spooky. Me spooky. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. I'm a little girl and I'm going to kill you. My name is Melissa and I play with balls. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>